hi my beautiful people welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome join the family by hitting the subscribe button down below i want to thank you guys for tuning in today i want to especially thank all of my subscribers because i don't think i i do that often so all of my subscribers i say thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate you guys and to my new subscribers i thank you as well i want all of you guys to turn on your notification bell so you get videos when i first upload and yeah let's get into this video so today basically we're talking about my diagnosis with uh breast cancer so i'm going to be talking about that the story is like super long my cancer journey is super long so the videos will be most likely broken into parts so this is going to be part one basically i'm going to explain what i was diagnosed with when um and like some of the questions that i get asked all the time so i'm going to be answering some of them questions in part one and yeah in part two if if you go to three four whatever the case may be uh you guys would know that's why you just tune in so you can uh you know just follow the story um this video is um long overdue I suppose the Ben uh, recorded this like last year sometime and I get I get asked questions all the time about my journey and stuff like that a lot of you who are my subscribers might not even know that um, I'm a cancer warrior and yeah I just want to share my story with you guys so that it can help and inspire and motivate someone else so guys you don't have to be afraid of anything just know that um, you know the higher power he got you she got you whatever you believe in but anyways guys if you're interested in this video then keep watching okay guys so i forgot to mention a disclaimer i am not a doctor i'm not a nurse i'm nothing in the medical field at all i'm just simply sharing my experience and i might not get all of the words correctly i will be inserting like words and pictures or something so you guys can see exactly what i'm talking about but i just had to let you know that so don't come for me if i don't know how to say the words or, or nothing like that all i'm sharing is my experience and what i can remember i will be looking on my cue card uh for the questions and just you know so that i can make sure i can answer each one correctly so with that being said the first question is basically um, what I was diagnosed with. Okay, so I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer and it's, it has different stages and different types. I was, um, it was called DCIS, ductal site two in, no, it was ductal carcinoma in site two. I will link, I will insert it. So basically, uh, yeah, that's what it was. So basically it's just like, if you have uh, lymph nodes or you have uh, some of the cancer in your ducts and it's just there or something like that, don't remember the correct term, I will be inserting, but yeah, stage two, DCIS. Okay, so, and with, with stage two, that means that your, uh, your cancer or the lump or whatever the case may be is two to five centimeters. And that's what mine's, I don't know the correct size, but it was two to five centimeters. Okay, so it also says when, my age and stuff like that. So I was uh, 25 years old when I was first diagnosed with breast cancer stage two. Um, it was in October of 2011 when I got the news. Um, yeah, I already said my tumor size and stuff. Let me see the questions. So the next question says, uh, what was the, how did you find out? Okay. So how I found out, so one day I just woke up um, and I had like my shirt, my shirt, by the way, let me, let me go back. I forgot to mention that it was on my left side, left breast. Okay. But anyway, so one day I woke up and it was like a little, little blood, little speck of blood on my shirt. And so when I looked at the speck, I was just like weird where that came from maybe and i was looking there where i didn't see nothing i'm like maybe i scratched myself in my sleep or whatever the case may be i didn't think nothing of it so i think like i don't know if it was the next day or a few days after um i woke up again and now my shirt was like a little bit more uh full of blood or whatever and then i got into the shower and as the shower pressure was um coming down on my breast it was leaking blood out of the nipple area basically like milk but it was blood 
And so, of course, I'm like, what the heck is going on? I didn't really panic, but I still like, okay, what's going on? So what I did was basically, I, you know, I, I told my, um, I told my family or whatever. I don't even know who I told first when I was in the shower or whatever. But when I got out, I know all I can remember is calling my auntie. May she rest in peace. My auntie, my second mom. Um, yeah, I called her because she's like the grandma, the mother, the doctor, the pharmacy, the counselor. She's like everything to us all. So we call her for recipes, whatever the case may be. So I'm like, let me call my auntie. She gonna know everything what to do. So yeah, so I called her and she was like, um, maybe it's like a little sis or something like that. Don't worry about it. Or maybe it might be a boil under your arm, you know, like stuff like that. She was like, don't worry about it. I'll call you back. Let me think about it because I'm cooking right now. So I'm like, okay, auntie. So I got a phone with her. I didn't think nothing of it. Like I wasn't like, you know, I just went on about my day or whatever. So uh, I didn't receive a call back from her that day or the next day or whatever the case may be. And um, so, yeah, I just ended up calling my doctor because I had his personal cell phone number. I called my doctor. Now, mind you, ladies, mind you, physical, the physical exam, when you feel your breasts and stuff like that, I used to do that. My doctor did it at every visit. So I didn't detect it that way. Just keep listening to the story. But anyway, so, yeah, so I called him and he was just like, okay, come in or whatever the case may be. When I got in there, physical exam as usual oh there's nothing i don't feel nothing everything look fine i don't know what happened is it squeezed it like nothing came out or nothing i don't know why our bodies do that once we enter you know the medical the medical building and everything gets better but anyway so yeah it was like it's nothing so he was like just keep me posted call my cell phone whatever the case may be so yeah i went home and i think it happened again so he set up an appointment for me to come in it was mind you guys i'm only 25 years old so you can't even get a mammogram until you're 40 years old so they went back and forth about it um so eventually they agreed to let me get a mammogram and then like the mammogram came back invasive of something like that i'm not sure so they was like we need to get a biopsy so a biopsy was like basically they go into they go into the ducts and yeah like i said i'm not a medical i biopsy you're gonna look it up you're gonna google it and you're gonna read about it okay thank you but anyway so a biopsy yeah and then i had went into went into my appointment for a biopsy basically they uh stuck with me with a needle like you know in the ducts and they, they went and took it to the lab and the lab would detect if it's like cancerous or anything so yeah biopsy came back and it was cancer so yeah it was cancer um let me get back to, let me get to the next question okay so it says how did i make how did it make me feel about the news okay so when i got the news i was confused i wasn't like afraid of anything i was just confused like what huh like you know we're used to breast cancer for one being an elderly people and for two um you will find a lump and stuff like that it wasn't a lump at all it wasn't a lump so it was just confusing and then i wasn't really afraid or anything like that but i was afraid to tell my family because i know my family so i was i was like afraid to tell them so anyways yeah after i got the news so actually i got the news uh he called me and he told me and then I'm just like, okay. So once I told my mom, because she was right there, I told my mom. And no, my mom wasn't right there. I called her. She was at my aunt's house. And um, another aunt, not the aunt that I was talking to in the beginning, talking about in the beginning. She was with my aunt, and I told her what happened, and they broke down, whatever the case may be. So it started making me get emotional and stuff. So a few days went by. Mind you, I didn't hear back from my auntie. So... I kind of knew it was something bad wrong when she didn't call me back because me and her was like this, you know, so make a long story short, she, you know, she was, she passed away. Okay. So let's say that. But anyways, 
yeah so i told them and then i was like i have to figure out a way to tell my entire family without telling them one by one individually or like telling one person and they tell the next person and people come to me like why you didn't say nothing why you didn't tell me and stuff like that so basically what i did was i just came up with like a meeting a family meeting we all got together and i broke the news to everyone and you know of course it's hard because they're all i also had um hey Watch out, baby. I'm yeah, doing a video. Water. Yeah, I'll be right back. Let me... Children, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm back. So, yeah, like I was saying, um, yeah, pretty much I broke the news down to my family. I also had... Uh, uh, you do this genetic testing. I had the genetic testing to see if it was genetic. It didn't run in my blood or anything. So, that also was confusing. Like, this is unbelievable. It's not real. Like, is it true or whatever? So it was like, get, get different opinions and stuff. So yeah, I, um, so next, next question. Um, oh, I had MRIs, body scans, all the, the works. I had the works going on. But anyway, so it says, how did it make you feel? Uh, okay. So what was the treatments? Okay. So my treatments was, I had chemotherapy treatment i believe i had eight rounds of the chemo and then i also did a clinical trial as well with with them um so basically a clinical trial is just like testing out um different medicines to see what this work you guys clinical trial remember google is our friend okay so anyways i had radiation let me take it back. So I had chemotherapy. So after the chemo, then I had a mastectomy. So I couldn't have my I couldn't have the radiation until I do the mastectomy. I had a mastectomy of my left breast. I will insert pictures so you guys can see what it is, and I will, you know, put up the word mastectomy so you can look look it up or whatever. So I had a mastectomy on my left side, and then I had to have radiation. And I forget how long I did radiation, but it was a minute. And then I did radiation. And then I also was getting uh, this shot. Was it once a month or twice? I'm not sure. But it's called Zolodex. And it's it's a shot. The needle was huge. Oh, my God. So it's a shot. It basically goes into your fat of your stomach, belly area. Yeah, so I was getting that. And then also I was taking tamoxifen. So tamoxifen is like a hormonal uh, peel and I was taking that for five years okay so what else because it was a lot I'm just trying to see if I wrote what I can remember so yeah okay so when I got the mastectomy um after when I got the mastectomy so they explained everything to me and afterwards they was like you can get um you can actually get either a, a double mastectomy but you don't really need it just in case you know, if you want to just match or you can get reconstructed. And I was like, no to the double and no to the reconstruction. So they were just telling me like the pros and cons of everything, the pros and cons. And I was just like, okay, I rather not, I don't need another breast, baby, baby. She gone, left side gone, she gone, she gone and she okay. Okay, I don't need to be reconstructing nothing, okay. I'm gonna show you guys. I don't even get it right here with me, but I'll show you guys in my next video. I'm gonna show you guys um, the replacement, breast replacement that I received that I got. And I also got a bra with it and stuff like that. So yeah, but I, I don't wear it or anything. Baby, that's what socks are for, know. okay. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. If, you, if you're in this situation or a family member in this situation and they wanna get reconstructed or they wanna remove both, you know, they was like, remove both to make it even or reconstruct it to make it even. But, baby, we are, we happy with what we got. Okay? So, that's that. Now, yeah, this is good. I feel like, y'all don't even know, I feel good getting this out. Because I've been sharing this story for years. I've been sharing it for years. But it's like with individuals. So, now I can just share it, like, all at once with everyone. <sighs> so... Yeah, let's see what else. Okay, so I had a port, a port catheter. So I'm going to insert a picture of that too. So the port was basically, okay, so 
I was having like so many issues. I have small veins, so I have issues with um, finding my blood and stuff. I like meant to that. say or finding my veins. Because you know they got to find a vein. They got to insert. They hook you up to the, um, to the um, girl. Y'all know, to the thing. But um, yeah, so you can be able to receive your medicines. Okay, so I was having issues with that. I had so they put a port inside they put a port inside of here and it's like a little square look thing circle i'm not sure they they insert it into your skin and every time that you come to the doctor that way they don't have to keep poking you to draw blood or poking you for you to be able to get your medicine to flow through so i used that port for a while but then it got affected so they had to remove it yeah they had to remove it this experience was painful let's just say that by the way it was painful horrible but i kept a good attitude during the whole thing but anyways i got a port catheter and yeah got that removed out, out after some time and i don't know i don't it's so much it's like i basically live at the um doctor so i will go to treatments like was it five times a week i believe five times a week i would go in the treatment room take my medicine or whatever and get up out of there go home go to sleep you know so yeah how did i feel when i first took my chemo so when i first took my chemo whew, it was like i don't know how to explain it, it was like it wasn't burning or hot. It was just like something. It's like you can feel poison going in you. Sorry, but that's just how I feel. Poison going inside of you. It was not good. It was a nasty to act. It was a taste. Make you want to gag. It was just like it made me sleepy right away. Just drained and stuff like that. It's just, um, but yeah, it was, it took me out first time. That's all I'm going to say okay guys so i don't want to make this video too long so we're going to leave this right here talking about um how the treatment went next video i explain even more um and i'm going to insert pictures so that um you guys can see like exactly what i'm talking about and i'm going to share more of this story because there's more to it guys okay so i thank you guys for watching this video i thank you for watching it thus far because a lot of people don't watch your whole video that's why i don't try i'm trying not to make it so long but i thank you if you made it this far and if you watch it this far without subscribing what are you waiting for join the family by hitting the subscribe button down below you guys already know i love me i love you and god do too and always remember that until next part peace and blessings